Uh, is there... I'm sitting down, the show started. Hi, folks. John Kerry was very gracious in his acceptance speech yesterday, and I respect that. I'm not like that myself, but I do respect it. Um, <laughs> this show, I guess I should have said concession speech, but I don't want to lose the pop moment, so I'm just going to keep talking. <laughs> this show brings to mind the adage that you can do anything if you put your mind to it. No, you can't. I can't. <laughs> I thought this show was going to be on for 30 years. Well, <laughs> you know what, though? This is the end, but they say every end is a new beginning. That's true about 40% of the time. <laughs> the rest of the time, every end is an end. Who knows? This... But before I go, I have to say that the Stanford crew of this show, starting with my creator, Lorne Michaels, and uh, <laughs> T. Sean and Jerry, as I call Seinfeld, Jerry, Comedy Central, which did do this show for two years, uh, and the one person that actually gave us a review, Bruce Fretz, out of all the reviewers, that, and CringeHumor.com, all the loyal fans of this thing, they all, the Stanford crew, you people know what we did here, and I know uh, all of you will be looking for work, and if you need anything from me, I say that now because I'm caught up in the spirit, talk to me in three months, I'll be like, well, I hope not. <laughs> Seriously. You guys made this show as much as we did, and you've got the laughs to prove it. I mean, there's things. To all, the, uh, to all the comedians that were on this show, keep telling the truth as you see it. We're the only ones that can do it. Even the comedians, which is most of them, that hate me because they don't think they were on as often as they should have been. I know you hate me and you'll never forgive me, but if you had a show and I didn't get on like I think I should have, I'd hate you and never forgive you either, so don't feel bad about it. <laughs> Finally, to the panel of regulars, the awful people that are on today, Richard Pryor was the greatest because of comedic integrity, so I'll explain to alleged comedic experts in the industry what comedic integrity is once. The ability to critique all the hypocrisies in society, yes, but also to be real enough to see that you're as guilty as everybody else in the game. Think about that. I'm not going to say it again. Now, excuse me while I go talk to what the New York Times called those mean-spirited, sometimes racist, sometimes sexist, sometimes ignorant. Sounds like every human being I've ever met who's honest with themselves. Yes, these dummies who had the balls to reveal all of their ugliness and their humanity for the sake of honesty and comedy. Let's start the show. <laughs> Let's start with some questions. I don't know where these came from. Do you think the media didn't review us most because, A, we made them feel ignorant because they couldn't categorize us, B, they only like edgy comedy when it matches their ideology, or C, we were too testosterone-driven and it irked them because they got beat up in high school? Or D, they was watching Leno and didn't know we was on. <laughs> Or but e, still the review. E, because they didn't know if they could like you or not because they didn't understand a word you said. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> we think, <laughs> we think, Idiot, we think he sucks. Like <laughs> sit there like a Roman emperor with your plate. Did you just say, we think he sucks? We think he sucks, but we can't understand him. So are you two trying to be the irreverent guys just because I no. gave a nice emotion? Shut up. Shut your mouth and let me finish Maybe my analyzation. I, I think it was C, man. See, yeah, two testosterone drip. Yeah. But that's we should me. really go out better than this, man. We're going out like suckers, man. Well, that shirt is going to take down the testosterone. <laughs> 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 All right, let's down a couple of notches. But uh, we should go out a little better, man. To show, to show our displeasure with them canceling tough crowd, we should go to the Daily Show and whoop John Stewart's ass. Yeah. That's what we should do. We should, uh, wait, we should give him his moment of zen right inside minute. his head. Oh, he's 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 I worked hard on my question one. Uh, Everybody ignored the first one. We made them feel ignorant because they couldn't categorize us, which was actually the smart thing. But of course, you dummies missed it. I disagree with that. No, but no. I think all—I think Shut all, up. I think it was all right. I think the people that I review shows, the people that are in the media that review shows, were right. a certain kind of upper class, elitist type of person. Yeah. They have a certain kind of view of comedy. And I think this show was like kind of in your face, very blue collar, sort of down. We weren't ironically honest. distant. Not, not ironically distant. I think they didn't know—they didn't know what to make of it. We Thank talked you. about and who that, and Patrice, and also Patrice never shut up. That didn't help. Well, we, I did hear some complaints. Eh, what are you going to do? Do you think this show will have offshoots now? Like, are we kind of like the African bambata of honest self-appraisal and full disclosure no. on TV? I didn't hear the beginning of the question. I'm sorry. I, was... I know. Once you were the African bambata, you were fuming. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> you know why this, this show can't be done? I'm going to explain. They'll try it. They Go ahead. Try it. They tried a couple times with crossballs and some other goofy nonsense. But 
Because we all know each other, and this is real. They're going to try to put some goofy idiots from L.A. together to go, oh, your head is big, and people are going to go, pooey. <laughs> they know it's real. The people know it's real. We know each other. That's true. It's real. Nick is real. Now, is that, yes. Now, is that so hard to answer the nice questions I wrote up? I didn't know it was going to be a pop quiz. Let's do some jokes. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what are you, Mr. Organic? Let's do some jokes. Yeah, cool, you, man. I'm not stopping you. you Go ahead. We were told there were no topics. There's going to be no form or anything today. Every day since the show started, I had to hear you. We were told this. We were told that. Well, you were a grown man. So figure it out on your own. Oh, you have no responsibility to show you, son of a bitch. You guinea bastard. I, I hope the Red Sox. Responsibility. I hope all the Red Sox die like and the Patriots. Pittsburgh beat the Patriots, and I was happy. We're, we're eating M and M's. You know what? I knew. I knew. <laughs> now, now I took responsibility. I knew this was gonna. I knew this was gonna turn into one of those sappy little touchy feely goodbyes. <laughs> I knew it. I started out nice with a nice thing at the you beginning. Did, you yeah. did. It was beautiful. You got it's mad so at Patrice and you got mad at me for for just throwing in some fun. Yeah, I mean, damn. You you scolded on the <laughs> And then you scold Nick for not doing it. Well, so there's no like winning with you. <laughs> you act like we're not gonna all be at exactly. the show later, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> We still live in New York. Yeah. Yeah. You're a oh. creep and you just like to hurt people. Yeah. <laughs> That's a no, given. No. Uh, <laughs> like these people feel sorry for you. They, That's a given. These I'm not trying to make that feel. They feel sorry for me anyway. Look at my friends. <laughs> we really are awful. Shut up and leave. We're not your friends. You used us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, you stop. used us to climb to, to the bottom of the ring, climb <laughs> yeah. to the middle. <laughs> oh, my plan worked. <laughs> <laughs> On the next drawn together. I haven't seen. Well, I wrote some more questions, fellas. <laughs> I can First of all, I... what do you feel is in? store for the rest of the losers that are sitting here with you right now. Where do you see their future? Let's start, Norton, what do you see for the boys? Just pick one guy. Um, I see uh, Keith. Yeah. I see Keith continuing uh, to succeed as long as um, Wanda and other people he opens for succeed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Keith, what do you think? You think Norton's got a future? <laughs> Norton's got a future? No, Dice fired him years ago. <laughs> it's true. Nick, any uh, words? Well, the two black guys don't have a future, obviously. They never do. Uh, <laughs> Because of their high mortality rate? That's exactly. Okay. All the fat and their I just want to make sure. Terrible everyone. diets, purple cherry soda, Doritos. They'll be gone in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> the Norton, gunshots and the projects. Norton will be the only guy in the 21st century to die of some type of chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Geraldo, you know, he went to law school. He'll, he'll, he'll go back to Oh, him. this punk. You know what? Why am I a punk? You, you know what? You, I want to, you know what, and you know why he's a sucker, man. This dude is a sucker, man. Why he just he played suck? himself. Tell me, he just, said, he just said, I'm going to die of some type of heart attack. He's going to die. Everybody's going to be dead. Yeah. Except for good old prepared Gerardo. Because Gerardo got a show coming on. You ass-kissing, greasy. Oh, yeah. 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 Let's let Greg speak. Greg's the only one who's in an uncomfortable position right now. Maybe because he loves the show. But today in USA Today, that whole big thing on him and some other shows on the network. So he's in this weird position where, you know, he's kind of like, oh, man, this is weird. You know, Greg, now, did you show me to you, Greg? <laughs> What's that? Did you show me to Janet? He's sitting right next to you. <laughs> Greg, how does it feel to be right. sitting here right now? Do you feel weird? Do you feel like uh, guilty in some way? You feel you see me feel guilty? You should. I, I do feel weird. Did you I see do me feel, jump uh, in Norm McDonald's desk on SNL when he's on a, you know? Uh, I do feel guilty. A couple, you know, the show's not picked up yet. So who knows what's going to happen well, with that. that's, don't uh, give us that. Uh, and, just tell uh, us how you feel. And I feel, obviously, right now, awkward and, and, uh, incredibly creepy, but that's not the right. thing. That has nothing to do with him. Would you, would you feel more comfortable if Colin sat there and you stood there? <laughs> yeah, get in. Don't forget it. Give him the practice. Go ahead and practice. Go ahead, man. Go no, practice. No, no, no. Come on. Just for a minute. Come on. I just can't say ahead, welcome Greg. to Hollywood Tonight or whatever. Go ahead, go ahead, man. Oh. This is me. Meanwhile, I fly myself out there. You know what? <laughs> you know what? This, this is better. <laughs> First thing I do, lose that guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't like this feeling. It's not nice. Get I don't back like to it. Where you I be. like being there. Get get back up there. Why? Where are you going? Come the rain's just up. <laughs> <laughs>
Norton goes, where are you? Norton just goes, where are you going? The ratings just went up. <laughs> okay, here's another question. Do you ever think that the reason I, Colin Quinn, am so grossly underrated as a comic is because a true genius has never appreciated while they're still alive? <laughs> Thank you, Carl. What was the end? What was the end of it? Why? Because a true genius has never appreciated <laughs> while, uh, while they are still alive. Well, we can change that. <laughs> I also I really think, part of the, I think part of the problem is that the audience isn't comfortable with anybody who's not in Chelsea having shoes and a jacket cut from the same material. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the critics hate us. Wait, Patrice is in a mood swing this act. What's up? Yeah. I just I was just having a moment, dude. You are? <laughs> thinking about the happy times. I'm I'm just saying we're not gonna we'll do the same thing. I mean he he's not gonna be around because he has to he has some house he bought in Westchester thinking this was gonna be on for more than two years. <laughs> <laughs> so I so hey, he's, 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 he's running true. around the country like a goddamn slave trying to save his house and his car. Yeah. But I was just thinking. I mean, every club, I mean, every club I mean, he goes, every I mean, club he goes I mean, to, he alienates himself. I mean, what are you doing? He, he curses out the owner, he curses out the stamp. I'll be selling coke to your relatives in school. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And also be there for the next Whatever, 20 years. man. I, look, I'm just saying, I'm going to miss, I'm just going to miss everything, man. I'm going to miss this. I know. This guinea <laughs> boat hack, this. <laughs> Somebody's this missing a backseat of a Lincoln, you. I, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna miss this. And the thing about it, I don't know. I, I guess I'm gonna miss. I don't know. I'm. This is. I'm having a moment right now. I know, but I, you know what? I'm not gonna miss. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna miss the I'm, fact. I'm having a moment. Yeah. Do we have to moment? watch you know it? Can we go on? I know. That's <laughs> that moment. Damn, he's so conceited. That moment. It's always been your show. So what's got places to be, man? Hurry this thing off. Yeah. And the reason we're not there is because stupid has to go to Philly. He's got places to be. He's got to pick up Wanda Sykes in about ten minutes and bring her back. That's not true. He's got to pick. Not that's true. a lie. He's got to pick up a dry cleaning. Any <laughs> picture. We'll be right back. Something. Over the last two years, we've done a variety of different things during the Act Three segments, kind of like a bouillabaisse. base. You know, it's like a French soup. It's got fish, potatoes. I don't know. Yeah, I think it has potatoes. You know what I'm saying. Here's our favorite Act 3 moments. Some of them. Size Me Up is where we bring out two of our audience members and our comics are going to guess where they're from, what they do, and then give an interesting fact about them. Ow. Oh, Tommy, okay. what do you got? Um, okay. He lives in a hollow tree. <laughs> <laughs> he makes cookies. <laughs> And his chest hair is made of cookie dough. Oh, yeah. Nick is a dumb dago working class boar. His IQ is under 100. As far as my IQ, it is under 100, but that's only because your sister swallowed 40 points of it last night. Supporters of Keith Robinson will tell you he's totally sane. But judge for yourself. Cops took me in a space shuttle, flew me to the moon, and put cheese on my ass. Keith Robinson. Paranoid, black, crazy. Paid for by the Tim Victory Party. I don't want to say that Jessica Simpson is a complete idiot, but... I don't want to say Jessica Simpson's a complete idiot, but um, she's so stupid she doesn't get her period every month. She gets a question mark. Oh. <laughs> Patrice! He's from the sun. <laughs> I like to call this the March of Bulimia. I think I see this bitch's heartbeat through her chest. A lot of you people who watch the show know that we sometimes reenact great scenes from great movies. Why? Because I was a comedian, people typecasted me, but I'm a great actor. When a man becomes preeminent, he's expected to have enthusiasms. Could it be? Yes, it could. Something's coming, something good. If I can wait. Dinky Dow! Dinky Dow! Who are you? The name's Blair Kensington. Martini. What are these pills? What? You're an addict! Give me those. A drug addict! I am number one. The this one. Uh, your hometown is some crappy white suburb full of jocks that you hated till you moved to Williamsburg. <laughs> hey, as long as I have a face, 
you'll always have a place to pee. So, so that's how it is around here? A bunch of angry comedians who don't like to see anybody else do well? I, you know, I didn't know that. Well, I guess you don't watch the show. Well, I mean, maybe you need more spirituality in your life or something. Okay, I'll believe in God if he kills you in the next 48 hours. What? For real, you heard me. Okay, Nikki DiPaolo. She's from Twin Oaks Nursing Home in Riverdale. She pumps gas in Fort Lauderdale. And she uh, gave Davy Crockett a hand job. Here's one for me. I've never understood how this man, me, has been so successful unless he intentionally invokes mistimed, unintelligent humor in some complex irony that I do not understand. Tell me if this sounds ironic. I want to stab you in the face. These are your rugs, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Knowing you and how cheap the show's you are, rugs. You're probably going to take all the stuff from the show gets canceled and put it in your apartment, right? <laughs> right? What else am I going to do? Leave it here so somebody else As a matter of fact, I would take good money that you're actually living here in the building right now. <laughs> oh, good night, everybody. Hey. We'll be right back. Well, boss, uh, we know this has been a tough day for you, so we all decided to chip in and give you a little pep talk. I uh, believe I'll start things off. Uh, they may be able to take your show, but they're never going to be able to take your dignity, simply because you threw that away yourself sometime between Celtic Pride and Night at the Roxbury. <laughs> I really don't know what you were thinking to begin with. The five comedians you chose as regulars have a combined total of zero successes in show business. But I can honestly say that you're probably the funniest person I've ever met, and I can't think of a comedian alive I'd rather fail with. Greg, off to you. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, well, today's a very sad day. I can't tell it's of, whether it's because of the end of the show or because of the, uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the, the herd of cattle that died to make Patrice's coat. But... I'd like, to cheer, I'd like to cheer Colin up, but you know, he's Irish Catholic, so you know, you won't take a compliment. You can only be cheered up by 12 pints of Guinness. But I, uh, I will say you, you're a smart, funny, honest, and brave guy, and you've really honestly been a true inspiration to me and to everybody around you, so you'll definitely land on your feet. Whether your gnarled, knobby bird legs hold up, that's another story. <laughs> Patrice. Thank you. I, uh, uh, it, it's painful, and, uh, it's the best thing I've ever done in my life. I'm gonna miss uh, doing the show. We're all gonna see. People don't understand that we're the, the most winning losers you'll ever meet. We cannot lose. <laughs> we we gonna be here. It's just we're not gonna be in this fashion, but we're just gonna end up somewhere. So I like to thank Colin for putting me on, man. It's the best thing I've ever done, and I appreciate it. Thanks, thank you. man. Damn it, come on. Now as you brought us in, I gotta be serious. Yeah, now, you don't have to, man. Go ahead. Whatever. Uh, Make a fool. Oh, if they're nah, being sincere and say something, yeah, try to be funny. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I'm you not even going to be funny. No, Let me you say gotta this do right it now. now. Try to be funny. What would you read what you wrote? The hell, the hell with that. Read what you wrote. This is uh, Colin, the second worry. best thing I've ever done. What's the best thing you ever did? Opening for Wanda. <laughs> All right, Nick. He has more staying power. <laughs> Damn it. Nick. First, I want to thank you for creating a show that allowed me to speak my mind, that allowed me to speak the truth, that allowed me to destroy any future I might have in this business because, because the industry now looks at me like I'm Ty Cobb without the baseball skills. <laughs> And as far as cheering you up, well, it's not like when the show ends, you're going to be penniless. You still get residuals coming in from SNL reruns, <laughs> tough crowd DVDs. I know you hit back end points on Crocodile Dundee, too. Uh, crocodile. Crocodile. <laughs> uh, crocodile. Are you making fun of how I talk? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> you, couple, you couple those earnings with the Social Security checks you'll be getting in a few years, and I figure you won't have to start eating cat food till around the year 2008. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Well, folks, that's it. Now, as you know, I'm going to say a few words. Uh, I guess it is kind of the end, but, uh, you know, maybe it's not the end. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe it is. Maybe I'll die peacefully in my sleep. Well, maybe I'll, people will think I died peacefully in my sleep, but it, they won't realize Freddy Krueger killed me in one of my dreams. That far being peaceful, it was the most savage and brutal of all murders. Well, probably you'll see me as a guest on some sitcom playing a plumber who has Tourette's syndrome or something that networks find funny and 
You know, you'll try not to notice the sad resignation in my eyes. You'll probably forgive me and say, hey, the guy needs money. What's he supposed to do? And then a few months later, you'll read the paper, former TV host found dead at 29 Palms Motel 6 or 6 Palms Motel 29. It won't matter. You'll say, hey, I wonder what the story was there, but you'll never find out because I'm not even worthy of a TV movie, let's face it. My publicist does a good job. Maybe they'll include me in those stories about the curse of SNL or something like that. Now, I'm really not going to go out like this. You understand that, right? That I'm really angry and I'm now issuing a fatwa against the media. That's an Islamic death warrant. Nobody crosses me like this and gets away with it. It was a strategic error on the part of the industry. And now, unfortunately, they're going to pay because, as they know, every reaction and action has a reaction. There's cause and effect. Do you honestly think people can treat me like this, okay? Yeah, that's right, folks. You made a mistake this time. This time you screwed up because I don't like to be toyed with. Well, I mean, uh, crowd left, huh? Shut up, stupid. This is really like the end of Friends, you know? You ever see the end of Friends? It's just the room where all the friends were and you go, wow, it's empty without Joey and his crazy, dumb remarks without Ross and Rachel and their... I'm still not sure about their relationship. I never really understood what they were about, and I didn't really care. I really didn't watch Friends, except the, I watched the end episode for some reason.